Last week, I was hanging out with some friends at a local smoke spot. Eventually, around 1am, I get pretty tired, so I decide to head home while I'm still stoned, so I can spend some time browsing Reddit before heading to bed. Seeing as I was out of my own personal tree at the time, it's about a 30 minute board ride back to my house, but there's a shortcut I can take closer to my house, down this long, secluded bike trail that usually cuts at least 5 minutes out of the trip since I'm mostly riding downhill on a board. Usually, nobody's ever on this trail, especially not this late at night. It's also pitch black, as there's no lighting on the trail, and it gets especially dark when I get down to the middle of it. But while riding down the trail, I notice an odd light that looks like a flashlight down a little bit ahead of me. The light then flashes over to me, and then immediately goes out. I didn't think too much of it. Maybe it was just some kids smoking on the trail or something, and got spooked when they saw somebody. Probably not a big deal. I continue riding down until I get to where I'd be within eye distance of where I saw the flashlight, and I notice that I don't see anybody up around on the trail where I saw the light. I thought it was possible the person just continued walking down the trail, but I have pretty good eyesight and didn't see anything that even looked like a shadow ahead of me, so it seemed like whoever was there either disappeared or was hiding. Being the paranoid person I am, I get off the board and hold it in my hand in case somebody is there and wants to mug me or something. Of course, in my head I assumed it might be a serial killer as well, because I'm paranoid as shit naturally, was pretty well stoned, and spent too much time reading on Let's Not Meet and Unsolved Mysteries. I continue walking forwards with the board still in my hand. Next to the trail are some bushes and trees. I think I notice a lone shadowy figure literally standing behind a bush and between two trees, looking somewhat hidden. The yo fuck sensors are immediately going off in my head. I shine the light on my phone in that direction and see a middle-aged man, indeed, standing there behind the bush, in between the trees, just staring at me, with a very creepy blank expression on his face. There was something sinister about it, and it really made me feel uncomfortable. I continue walking forward, panicking like hell inside my mind. I walked past him, expecting him to try an attack or something, but all he did was silently continue staring at me, even slowly turning his head to follow me as I moved. When I got a short distance ahead of him, I look back and notice that all of a sudden, he's following me at a pretty brisk pace. Immediately I nope the fuck out and jump back on my board, beginning to ride away faster than I ever have before. I looked back one last time before I got too far away, and he had stopped following me, but was just standing there, just in the middle of the trail, staring at me. I got home shortly after that, and was freaked out of my mind. It was a pretty terrifying encounter that I'd rather not have again. I grew up in a smallish city in Europe, but moved away before my teenage years. However, I would go back every summer, at first with my parents, then by myself, to visit relatives and friends. We had an apartment that was located off a large boulevard, and a smaller street led straight to the downtown area. It was about a 10-15 to 15 minute walk downtown and I must have walked that same route hundreds of times in my life. One summer, when I was old enough to travel by myself and go out drinking with friends, I was walking home down the same street. It wasn't too late, maybe 10 on a warm summer night. A storm was brewing, so the air felt heavy, and there were strong gusts of wind. All in all, it was a bit creepy out to begin with, Luckily, I had only a few drinks and was relatively sober. 
as I started walking down the street, I could hear someone walking behind me. In general, I hate when people I don't know are behind me, so I stopped to light a cigarette and let him pass. As he walked by, he asked me for a light, which I gave him, and we even joked about the weather a bit. At this point, he's walking in front of me, with some distance between us, but at every intersection, he would turn onto the cross street, but when he saw that I was going straight, he would swerve back onto the street I was on. So essentially, he was following me by being in front of me. Bizarre, but I had just assumed he was some drunk dumbass. After this happened the fourth time, I started to freak out, especially since my building was coming up. And to make matters worse, there was a construction site right next to my building. The basic structure was up already, but the openings were covered by tarps, and it was pitch black in there. So basically, the perfect place to be yanked into. I grabbed my key and put it in my hand, ready to either open the door as fast as I could, or punch him with the key between my knuckles as a last ditch effort. As he got closer to the construction site, he started slowing down and looking back at me. At that point, I picked up the pace and bolted for the entrance. Luckily, he was at the far side of the building under construction, so I made it to the door and into my building. I booked it upstairs and sat in the dark for the next hour, so he didn't know which apartment was mine. I occasionally sneaked a peek out the window to see if he was still there. He was, for about 30 minutes. He stood outside the apartment building for 30 fucking minutes staring up at the windows. I barricaded the door and slept with a knife next to the bed that night and made sure I had an escort on the way home after that. Just over a month ago, I made one of the biggest mistakes I possibly could have in giving a very shady person my phone number. For a bit of background, I'm a college student who works in an airport shop. One of the adjacent shops is a place I frequent. Said shop is where I met Adam. I spoke with him a few times, and on one of my visits, he was asking me what I do for hobbies. We soon began conversing about video games, music interests, and other things. He mentioned that he loved to grab a beer and hang out with me sometime, to which I figured, why not? I'm fairly new to this city, couldn't hurt to socialize with some new people and make some friends. We exchanged our numbers and went our separate ways. A couple of days later, he texted me in the morning, saying he had to take buses to get to work and was asking if he could have a ride. I apologized and said no, because his town is located about 17 miles from where I live, and in the morning I have class before work. Days rolled on and Adam kept mentioning wanting us to meet up and eat together. However, for whatever reason, plans always fell through at the last minute. Out of the blue one day, he asked me to borrow $10. I found it strange, but shrugged it off and said no to him again. At random intervals, he would text me to ask to borrow money. $5 here, $10 there, and always for a bus pass, he said. I said no every time. He would also ask me for rides very frequently, for me to pick him up in the wee hours of the morning to take him somewhere. I even ignored his texts for a few days, and that was that, or so I thought. My phone rang one morning at about 6am, to which I answered, still half asleep. Hello? I have some great news for us, man. Do you have any idea what time it is? I'm getting a car. It's a super sport. I'm gonna go test and buy it today, but it'd be a lot cheaper if I had someone to sign with me. Would you be willing to do that? Then he proceeded into an obviously rehearsed talk about how we should be roommates as well. 
His reasoning was we both play video games, so we have a lot in common. I could barely get a word in as he told me about all these apartments, how safe and secure it would be, what a great deal it was, how much fun we'd have, and things like that. I told him I wasn't interested and had to go. We've never hung out. It was weird enough that he wanted to be roomies. He kept trying to push me to do it. I just hung up. He even took the liberty to text me a link to the apartment complex. I ignored him for several more days. All was normal once again. Or so I thought. He texted me frantically, saying his girlfriend Monique was stranded and needed $100 to get to his place ASAP because it was an emergency. He texted me two photographs of a random woman. Once again, I responded no and told him to just leave me alone. Last night, he texted me saying Nikki got her car back from the police, but she's out of food and gas and needs $200. He also said she had $8,000 on a credit card hidden at her brother's place that she couldn't get to. He called me over 10 times and texted me at least 30, each more desperate than the last, wanting me to wire Nikki money to a Walmart. A different number texted me as well, claiming to be Nikki and begging for my help. More pictures of a different woman. I blocked his number, but for some reason the app I use won't block texts, so he could still message me. In the middle of the night, he texted me once again, asking for $109, and was kind enough to provide his routing number and bank address. Ignored. And this afternoon, he asked for 20 and sent a photo of a business card, telling me how great the benefits were, and to apply and tell them that Adam recommended me. There were plenty of other creepy details about him, such as him bragging that he's speaking to 20 different women, and some of these online scams he's trying. I grew up in a suburb of LA County in Southern California. It had a very small, midwestern town type of feel. Nothing like you get near the city of Los Angeles. I'm a female, and I was about nine years old at the time. It was the mid-80s. My parents had bought a house a couple years prior that was built in the 1930s. There was a playhouse in the backyard that resembled the main house. It was probably a little over five feet high when you walked into it. It was just a room built with the same materials as a house. It had a real roof, walls, plaster, carpet windows, a door. The original owners obviously had it built for children. My best friend lived next door, and she was a couple of years older than me. We had talked about spending the night in this playhouse for about a year, and we finally got up the nerve to do it. My dad had set everything up for us. To give you an idea of what the yard was like, there were two large orange trees that had dropped several leaves around the yard. The yard was fenced in. And there was a detached garage that led to the back alley and a woodshed next to the playhouse that had a gate that also led out to the alley. Around the side of the house, there was a shorter gate, about three feet high, that led to the front yard. Everything was very old. We never really closed the door leading from the yard into the garage all the way, because it was old and swollen, and you had to slam it shut or open if you latched it. We would just close it enough, where it would stick a little, but we never pulled it shut all the way. The small gate on the side of the house that led to the front yard was also hard to open or close. You had to lift it up to really get it to move, because it used to get stuck on the ground. So nighttime rolls around, and we're set up with our sleeping bags, having a great time playing Mad Libs and listening to the radio. All the while, we stopped several times, thinking we were hearing someone walking around. A couple of times I called out for my dad, because it sounded like the footsteps of a heavier person, and my dad was 6'3". No one had answered, 
and it wasn't uncommon for us to get spooked because we were both nuts for horror films. Usually, I would open the door and look outside, but something just creeped me out enough where I didn't really want to do that. We tried looking out the windows, but we had a light on so we couldn't see out very well. Being young as we were, we didn't think to turn off the light so we could see out better without being seen. We sort of just brushed it off like we were probably scaring ourselves, like we usually did. We finally decided to turn off the radio and the light, and just lay there and get ready to go to sleep. Shortly after we did, we both sort of bolted up in our sleeping bags, and started to say to each other, Okay, someone really is out there. We honestly just sat there, grabbing onto each other and listening. We had a small terrier, but we ruled out that it was her quickly. First, you could hear it even from my friend's house next door, every time the dog came in and out the dog door. It was metal and would swing several times, and we hadn't heard the dog come out. Second, the footsteps we heard on the leaves were not from a dog. They were not from a child either. They were from someone older. We kept hearing it and they would get closer to the playhouse, stop, then start again and get further away. And this went on for what felt like 20 minutes, or it was probably closer to 5, when finally it sounded like all hell was breaking loose. We hear the dog come out the dog door, and begin barking as if she's snapping right at someone's heels. And then we hear the side gate leading to the front yard open. We hear it drag on the ground, Immediately, we dart out the door of the playhouse and see that the gate is open and see the dog running out. The dog couldn't have opened the gate regardless. However, even if she could, a dog would push the gate open. The gate had been pulled open towards the backyard. We just started running out towards the front yard, my friend in front of me. The dog was way ahead of us at this point and we couldn't hear her anymore. What I noticed as I was running out was that I could see the door leading from the backyard into the garage, and it was open. When I got to about where the side gate was, I heard the garage door slam. We kept running and saw the dog coming back towards the front yard. My friend grabbed her and we started ringing the front doorbell. In all this commotion, my friend and I had both commented that it could have been my parents playing a joke on us, trying to scare us. And this clearly was not the case. My mom came to the door half asleep and very confused about why we were out front with the dog. My dad was sleeping upstairs. It was odd for him to be home at night, but he had been on vacation, which is one of the reasons he'd been so willing to take the time to set up the playhouse for us. We woke up my dad to check things out, and when we all went back into the yard, the garage door was indeed slammed shut. And there were two people out in the yard with us, one clearly ran out to the side gate when the dog came out, and the other most likely had hidden in the garage and watched us run off. We figure they probably exited the garage, slamming the door shut, then went out the other gate or jumped the fence heading out to the alley. And my parents were a bit skeptical of this story, and I honestly think that for a few minutes they thought we were goofing around. Then my mom swore it was probably my friend's younger brother trying to scare us. And they didn't call the police. The next day, my mom called my friend's mom, and her mom was a bit creeped out because she said her son was home with her and that he wasn't part of any prank on us. We talk about it to this day with our parents. They now feel that they should have called the police, but hindsight is always 2020, I guess.